All right, so uh, this is turbo car charger cartridge out of a uh, Mini Cooper, uh, a 2009 Mini Cooper. So the reason I replaced it is, I don't know if this will show up on camera, but there is a fair amount of play in this direction. I don't know if you can see that or not. I would guess like a 32nd of an inch, maybe a 16th of an inch of play. And there's a worrying amount of play back and forth here. I would guesstimate that to be a 16th to 330 seconds back and forth. Uh, the new cartridge, which unfortunately I didn't film, uh, went, uh, is in the car. So uh, the new cartridge was a little better than this, but still had more play than I would have expected uh, for something like this. because it's got liquid cooled bearings in it. So I wouldn't think it would be all that much play. I would think that you wouldn't need that much for thermal expansion, but apparently I was wrong. So I screwed this one up cause I chipped the housing. So I figured it's worth taking it apart and seeing if it's worth, uh, or if they could be rebuilt. Uh, so turbocharger, uh, the exhaust spins this little impeller. Uh, and the intake air is coming into the engine on this side and uh, This little thing right here makes like an additional 50 horsepower. It's crazy, right? Like Crazy All right. Well, let me get a couple wrenches and we'll see if we can pop this bad boy apart All right, so on the front end we appear to have a nut that I don't know what it is doesn't appear to be locking in any way. It's definitely not steel, and it's definitely not aluminum. That might be titanium. That might be a titanium part. Oh, framing. Ah, it's not threaded on. It's just kind of on there. All right, so that's the impeller. I, I really think this is titanium. I mean, it, it just feels way too light to be anything but. Man, marvels of modern engineering, huh? All right, so this would be the back plate. This would be uh, the intake side. So there was an O-ring that I believe sat here uh, that keeps everything in. Um, this backside seal here would be uh, the part that if it goes out, you're gonna have a bad day because it's gonna suck all the, uh, all the oil right through your engine, I do believe. All right. All right, so that's the center shaft. You can clearly see where on there. I don't have my calipers out here, otherwise I'd measure it. But you can definitely see that that was fretting a little bit. I would assume that's uh, kind of like cold start damage because this thing has to receive oil pressure to work. We've got, uh, these look to be ceiling rings of some sort, like those, uh, they do feel like metal and you can see any oil that was leaking out here was burning and just leaving carbon deposits that's no good Ugh. yeah that was definitely leaking a healthy amount no that can't possibly ride on plain bearings i think it does i think it just rides on like brass bushings in there that's nuts huh clearly uh you guys that are like full-time auto mechanics or working with geez sorry sorry to blind you uh so you guys are that are all auto mechanics and whatnot probably are not very surprised i however am uh easily amused ah there's an internal snap ring in there. It's gonna be a pain in the ass to get out. 
You can see that little guy right there. Let's get this O-ring out of here. See if that gives us any clue. So this appears just to be, I think this green is a different material. And it's got a metal band through the middle of it. Um, I'll have to look up what this green stuff is. I don't think it's uh, your standard rubber O-ring. It's something more high temp. So here's a classic case. This is just built up carbon from oil burning. And uh, Bright Clean barely even touches it. Like gasoline would dissolve it. But uh, not much else dissolves that, uh, that carbon soot stuff. So all that stuff that they sell you for your engine is not doing a whole lot of anything. Uh, it sure looks like that whole bearing set should pop out this way. So let me get a punch and give it a little tap. Yeah, well, there you go. Just a brass bushing. Yeah, that's just a plain bearing in there. That boggles my mind. Because this thing's got to be spinning at, I mean, just a horrendous RPM to generate the power that it's generating. But, I mean, I guess, I mean, this is the way engines uh, work too, but I would have, I would have, if you had asked me before I took this apart, I would have bet you a significant amount of cash that uh, the bearing in here would have been like a needle bearing with two small tapered roller bearings or something that are bathed in oil. Now, the fault to this that I see is exactly what, what we see here. So this shaft is wearing because you're, you're relying on the tolerances here and then that, <coughs> that <o> <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I get all choked up when I talk about this stuff. Uh, you're just relying on that oil bath and any particulates or anything that are getting in there are just gonna rub into the bearing in the shaft. But, huh, that's pretty wild. So, I don't know how much more we can really take this apart here. Uh, so, it was water cooled. You've got a coolant channel that comes in here and comes out, well, comes out through here Really? No, that's oil. I'm sorry, I'm an idiot. Yeah, that's oil. So the oil would come to the back side of the bushing. Uh, this has a little through hole, so oil would be forced into the center of this and then out through the back ends of that. So actually, that's the oil return. I'm sorry, that is. That's the oil return on this side. So the oil inlet was this guy. So you get high pressure oil coming in, it goes through and then uh, comes out the return and goes back to the engine. These channels here are gonna be the water. Yeah, so you can see it's filled up there. Nothing's coming out of the oil channels. So that would be water cooling. So it's circulating water around this part to, uh, to cool the inside of it. I kinda wonder how they manufacture this thing. It looks like had to dump the acetone. Looks like this whole piece is cast. So I wonder if they cast these internal passageways as well. Um, and then, uh, you know, do some turning on this. Yeah, I mean, this was clearly turned on a lathe. All these features could be cut on a lathe and uh, on a mill. Um, and this front boss, man, it sure seems like this should come apart, doesn't it? Okay, so that snap ring that's down in there, I don't know if you can see it, but I think that, that all that that little guy is doing is retaining the bearing. Yeah, that's all it's doing. It's retaining the bearing in there. So, man, that would be a heck of an operation to cut all those little channels on a lathe. And then right here, so that piston ring, this little ring, is riding, yeah, okay, just on the outside there. Wow, that's incredible. So this outer impeller 
sure feels like the same material that this is. I mean, this has got to be titanium. See, I'm about the only thing that this could be. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. Certainly is a uh, interesting part. This is not what I expected it to be. Um, like I said, I would have bet money that you would have had roller bearings inside of there and not, uh, not a little plane bearing. That's pretty wild. Pretty wild. I'll have to read up and see. Um, I, I mean, I thought that plane bearings were not tolerant of high RPMs. I thought that that was the fault. They're good with re extremely high loads, to my knowledge. Like, uh, they, they absorb uh, axial and um, um, thrust extremely well. But I didn't think that they were very good for uh, high low or high RPM applications. I thought that you know exactly what you see here. You'd see all that kind of scoring uh, to to you know to make it fit. And it's also interesting to me that they're normally bushings are fairly tightly fit. Uh, plain plain bearings are fairly tightly fit uh, for them to work properly um, or to work well. Uh, they've got to be fairly tightly fit and. I mean, even the new one had more play in it than I would certainly expect. Um, so, I don't know. This is, this is really interesting. I, I'd be interested to see some other turbocharger cartridges apart and see if they're the same construction uh, or if, uh, if they're different. Like I said, I would have bet money on a roller bearing. It's just blowing my mind. Blowing my mind. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching.